Everyone, I am Brian. Hello, everyone. I am Edward. We are very excited to join the finals competition of Core Face 50 Online Challenge 2021. We are Team SG1713 Nanyang 8. We are from Singapore. This is our first time participating in the Robo Cup Challenge. We have attended Robotic CC8 Nanyang Primary School since 2020. And we too have been in virtual reality holiday camp which used Cold Spaces platform. We attended Cold Space Rescue U12 category. The main problems we have identified include what is the optimal scoring strategy? How does the robot move forward efficiently? How to collect super or super plus objects? And how to reach the deposit box in the shortest time? We applied a few methods, analysis and design systematically, applying various AI algorithms, and fine-tuning AI algorithms after trial and error. In the end, we managed to double the points and achieve 2,030 points. The mission is to collect the object, deposit them to get the highest scores. We broke down the talent task into the following mini tasks, collecting objects, depositing objects, avoiding traps, walls, and obstacles, and collecting super and super large objects. The overall mission is accomplished after completing all the mini tasks. So what is our optimal scoring strategy? In the preliminary map, red, cyan, and black objects are evenly distributed in the map. It will be easy to collect one or two sets of RCB and generate super or super plus objects. On scoring comparison, compared collecting combinations in normal zones and special zones using a bar chart. Take six black objects, for example, compare it with one or two sets of RCB. Even with one C set of RCB, it gives more points than six black objects. The bar chart clearly identifies that RRCCBB is a combination that maximizes points. We need to try our best to collect and deposit one or two sets of RCB. Here are some videos to achieve optimal scoring. Strategy 1. To achieve RFCCBB, collect the object only if less than two objects of the same color is loaded. Strategy 2. We have a 30 seconds time limit to prevent robot from wandering without collecting objects. If only 1 minute 40 seconds left to the end of the game, collect any object it detects regardless of color, since there is no time for the robot to collect super objects. Our strategy for collecting super or super plus objects is generating more super or super plus objects at first and then collecting them at one go. As the robot can only collect up to six objects, collecting a super or super plus object immediately after generator will occupy one slot. This reduces the chance to collect and generate super plus objects in the next depositing. Here we have an illustration based on the sample with six deposits in the game. It's clearly explained that piling super or super plus objects will achieve an optimal result. On the left, we have the robot collecting the super or super plus object immediately after it's generated in a practice map. The robot needs to spend time to navigate from the deposit zone to the super or super plus object. On the right, we have our optimal strategy. Near to the end of the game, the robot will run along the wall to collect super or super plus objects at one go. This saves time searching from the deposit zone to the individual super or super plus objects. We have two strategies to make the robot move forward efficiently. Strategy one, move faster there is no loaded objects so there is no need to avoid traps. Strategy two, Move faster coordinate y equals 2 as it is far from the trap. Here we have used three dimensional matrix of the position system. This helps to easily identify the approximate location and the surroundings. It is hard to stumble 
on the deposit zone randomly. Making the robot go to the deposit zone quickly is important. For the deposit zone at coordinates 2 2, the robot goes down, walks along the yellow zone, and turns to the deposit zone at the end of the yellow zone. For the deposit zone at coordinates 2 0, the robot walks along the wall to avoid the obstacle at coordinates 2 0 and turns to the deposit zone. Here is our overall flow chart. In the first two seconds, the robot will turn towards special zone. If it is just after the deposit, it will count the number of super objects. If the timing is less than 140 seconds, it will search and collect the super and super plus objects. If the robot did not deposit, then it will check object and collect it based on optimal score. The robot will efficiently avoid traps and obstacles if any are moved forward. During implementation, we have added our own variables. These variables hold the value to be used in advanced statements or advanced actions. Here is the illustration for the state variable. It is used when the robot navigates your position, for example, coordinate number 5 equals 0 to deposit box of position 2, 0. The advantages are there is no need to rewrite the same condition for the same state. The state can be set or reset easily when the robot is in the state or leave the state. We do not have to use non-interrupt action. The robot can repeat the same actions in the state. Of course, there are times when the robot did not work as expected. We need to check the debug info to see if any variable was not the expected value. Here's one sample where the robot is keeping on turning. After debugging and monitoring the variable curl action, we noted that the robot repeats the actions, finding deposit zone, and finding super objects. Then we noted that it's due to the statement used in the advanced conditions, which confused the robot. After we gave further detailed restriction not finding super objects when finding the deposit zone, in the advanced conditions, the robot could move smoothly according to our design. It might take a lot of time to figure out the VRX via debugging, but debugging is worth it. Here are the conclusions of the we created an intelligent rescue robot for the preliminary game. After applying various AI algorithms, systematically and fine-tuning algorithms diligently, our robot can always move intelligently according to our design. Our score was ne near, near 2,000. Sometimes it is over 2,000. We are quite satisfied that this is our first time attending Global Park Online Challenge. If we were asked to solve the same challenge again, we would Firstly, consider using C code to implement advanced functions. Secondly, determine the exact position based on the ultrasonic sensors. Thirdly, use square and angle targeting with trigonometry logic. And lastly, learn from team SG7004 about how to use vector maps to determine the speed the robot should move from any position and how to use coordinate targeting to navigate to the super or super blast objects. We have learned a lot using the cold space robot. We understood the value range of the color sensors RGB. It may require adjustment. How our plus of the sensors work. It is quite helpful to use this to detect the distance. Example, the robot can run along 15 cm on the wall. Create own variables, new state variables, so that the same code can be reused. In the end, we have understood how we can program to make the robot intelligent. Attending RoboCup Singapore Open 2021, Coast Base Rescue Challenge made our June 2021 school holiday more meaningful under current COVID phase, which we cannot have much outdoor activities. With only 24 hours to complete the preliminary game, we learned to be calm as a team and work react logically and speedily. We also learned how to brainstorm and split the work together. Our advice for Coastbase beginners is to watch YouTube RCAP Academy as there are plenty of valuable videos which are not limited to U12. You can learn them for strategy or good presentations. Coding may take time and effort. Never try, never know. Perseverance is your sword. We have come to the end of our presentation. Thank you for listening. Please stay tuned to enjoy our game video.